Hey everybody. Hello Blue World. So cameraman Todd and I are here to do a vlog. That's right. We haven't done a vlog in a long time. It's been a while. It's been a couple years. It's been a hot minute since we've done a vlog. Vlogs are fun and we like to do them when the adventure we just had is very fresh in our minds. And so we just finished a pretty amazing experience. Why don't you tell them? That's correct. So we are back down at Merritt's Mill Pond in sort of the panhandle of Florida. Jonathan and I are uh, getting rebreather certified, which is how the week started. Our instructor was the world famous Ed Sorensen. And uh, he made the week exceptional in all sorts of ways. <laughs> yes. So we decided that we wanted to get certified on the KISS Sidewinder Rebreather, which has sort of become the overwhelmingly most popular rebreather for cave diving because of its very low profile and just the way that it emulates a side mount open circuit in a package that's actually somehow smaller. Um, so. Once we decided that, you know, we had to pick an instructor and there really was no question that it had to be Ed. Um, it really is like the best sort of travel reed breather and sort of the best reed breather for side mount cave diving passages. Uh, I think bar none at this point. Yes. And, and that, that's why Ed Sorensen and Brian K. Cook, both are who are friends, uh, use them and two of the top instructors in the world. Yeah. Uh, if you go through a list of the who's who of rebreather cave divers, you'll find that the KISS Sidewinder is in a, in a large percentage of those people's yeah. main thing. So, you know, when we decided that that was the rebreather we wanted, um, we knew that we wanted Ed Sorensen to be our instructor. And one of the reasons was you know, he doesn't have a reputation for being easy. He has a reputation for being hard. Yes. And frankly, I don't want an instructor that's easy. I want an instructor that teaches me so that when I get out of the class, I don't die. Yeah, <laughs> especially with this, you know, this is not, unlike many scuba certifications, because there's, you know, this plethora out there, you know, river diving certification. There's all these like, cards that are a little bit almost of a business model. When you're moving to a rebreather, it's not. You're talking a very serious piece of life, life equipment. Very different, very different from open circuit diving. You have to know open circuit diving already. And then rebreather is a very next level to that. But the mistakes only have a grave outcome. There's no casual, there's very little in the way of like a real mistake in rebreather diving that doesn't have serious consequences or the potential of serious, the most serious consequences on the back end. Um, and that's why you want really good instruction. Yes. And that's what we got. And it so, was, and so I, I, you know, <laughs> the reason we're doing the vlog is because we wanted to talk about some of the stuff that happened in the class. Yes. And, and so the thing about Ed though, he is a wonderful, super nice guy. And we've known him for years and he's always been very cordial. But have you ever seen the movie Full Metal Jacket? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> because as an instructor, you get to a moment where you feel like you're like private pile <laughs> and you're under the drill sergeant from the movie Full Metal Jacket. He is like full, in, in, in point of fact, he does actual military training for, training for the Navy to train rebreather divers. And he, uh, he makes you he presses upon you the severity of each lesson in a way that um, many instructors do not these days. Right. His, his rationale for being tough is he doesn't want you to do something stupid. He wants to train you to be awesome and he doesn't, he's not going to let you pass unless you can do it. And he's got, there are stories, I mean, just people we talk to at the shop, people yes. that work for him yes. that he wouldn't pass. Yes. They had to take extra days of training because they were not living up to his level of expectation and he was not going to pass them even if they worked for him until they met his standard. It was mentioned many times by both the some of the customers who had previously gone through the training and by some of the people in the shop and by Ed himself that 
crying was not uncommon. <laughs> I almost cried sometimes. And I, I have to say, you know, there were, uh, I had, uh, I think day one, I had some very significant issues. And day two, I had even more significant issues oh, where boy. Ed was definitely not happy. I, and to be, to be blunt, uh, I stepped into the water and immediately flooded my loop. <laughs> and Ed, Ed. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, I came down very assertively and, and, and uh, directly, but was correct. Uh, I had made a terrible mistake. He's, I learned a he says, valuable lesson. You have got to be bleeping kidding me. I told you this on day one. Close the DSV before you do anything. In my, def <laughs> in my defense, my prior, the other rebreather that I use, uh, has a, a valve that shuts this way. So like a lot of sort of plumbing in a household, you know, this is flow and this is, you know, if the flow is this way, then 90 degrees to the flow, it's off. So I have a BOV, a bailout valve, which is a built-in open circuit second stage with the dive surface valve. You turn it this way, it flows. You turn it 90 degrees to that and it's off and you have a regular scuba. I had never used the lever where it's like up, is close uh, up is on. open up is on i still don't know <laughs> he still doesn't know up, up is on meaning it's a full it's the closed circuit rebreather off and down is off. off and there's a little little peephole you have to kind of pull it down and then breathe out and then just that little peephole will blow air out <laughs> I, it's, I, I have to i have to admit like you're used I, to it no i didn't mess it up because the the shut off on the mouthpiece on the kiss is the same as on my old drager that I dove for like six years in season one of Blue World. So um, I'm actually, that that I'm used to. So sure. I didn't have to get used to a new shut off on my DSV. So that, you know, I feel bad it's for you. It's a big you. mistake. No, but you know, and now you know I what? know. I will not make that you'll mistake never, again. You'll never make that mistake. Yes, and I, let's be clear, I will also never live down that mistake No, you again. won't. No, definitely not, definitely not. But, but, uh, but I'd rather learn it in training, right. and that was the right place to do it. And it came at such in a high emotional context, I will not soon forget. Like, you had nightmares. I did, I didn't sleep that night. It, like, Ed yelled at you and you had nightmares. Yes. I didn't quite get to tears, but there were, there were moments. <laughs> and everybody got really quiet. Yes. And you know, I felt like cracking a joke, but I was like, this is not, <laughs> this is not the time. You get yelled at. It felt <laughs> like you get yelled I'll at too. I'll crack the joke later. Like the, if the teacher's oh. upset, the, you know, the whole, the whole classroom might pay. <laughs> the best part was that underwater, he wears a little Paralens video camera yes. on his mask. It's like a GoPro, but it's designed to go on a scuba mask. <laughs> And after every dive, we would review the footage and yeah. he would make little hand signals into to the, the foot, camera. to the camera. He'd have a, he'd be shooting like one of us swimming by and he'd put, do a hand signal going, nope, no, he's, he's head up, you know, he's doing this, he's doing this. It's like a virtual reality game. You see what's going on, but all you see is a couple hands in front right, of the yeah, camera. Yeah, the hand signals. Like, and then, and then what you see is all the footage would go back and forth because he's going, <sighs> So we're gonna put that in the segment. It's gonna be the Ed Cam. Yeah. So we're gonna make some fun out of it. It's gonna um, be great. But you know, it, it was tough. And and what's very interesting is that normally uh, you would take the rebreather class in open water. N you know, not in a cave. Yes. But because Ed doesn't really have open water to teach in, he has special permission from Kiss to teach his class in the cavern zone of. Jackson Blue Springs. And so you're doing your training in an overhead environment. You're not far from the exit, but you are in an overhead environment. And so he feels that he should teach the whole class knowing full well that most of the people that take the class from him are gonna go on to cave dive with it. He feels that he should take, teach the whole class as if everyone is gonna cave dive with it. And sure. so you are expected to have all cave diver everything. Yes. Cave diver attitude, cave diver equipment, cave diver body positioning, cave, cave diver fin etiquette. And let's just say he's really strict about that. Very strict. I don't think my ankles go that way, but no. by the end of the class, I learned they're gonna go that way or it's gonna yell at me. Yes, yes. Yeah. there's a lot and, of uh... And he expects you to have like perfect buoyancy control. Well, why don't we talk about buoyancy control in so, a rebreather? Well, this is this is the thing, right? The the
biggest piece of transition, I think. Other than, you know, the mechanics and the physics and setting things up and the care and stuff. But as far as the actual operation of the unit while diving, it, buoyancy, buoyancy, buoyancy. That's what you're really there to nail. Like, obviously, you can you monitor, like, your PPO2. You can add oxygen. You can add diluent. There's all these safety procedures. But actually driving and flying the unit, um, it, it's buoyancy is the issue. Because it's open circuit, we take an inhalation and so we get a little more buoyant and then when we exhale that that air or whatever we're breathing leaves us and so we start to sink and so you and I have been doing this so long that it's instinctive to us to like inhale and start going up a little and exhale and start going down a little and that has become a part of how we swim and maneuver in a cave or in any environment it's just it's instinctual and we have to now fight that hard-earned skill yeah. and relearn because now breathing in breathing out doesn't change your buoyancy at all but if you move up a foot well all that air expanded and now you're going to like be rapidly ascending it's not like you can just exhale a little bit and make a correction no no no, no. you you well you actually, can. actually you have you to can, Let me but you have to do it through your nose so yes. it doesn't go back into the counter line yes so you're, you're, <laughs> you you don't exhale into the loop is what i mean you have to suddenly create bubbles exhale you know through your nose really or out the side of your lips and then counteract that buoyancy change even for just a little change like a foot up, up or down yeah now it's the opposite if you go down that means you have to add a little bit of gas to make up for that you can't just like take in a slightly larger breath which is what we'd instinctually do and literally one foot makes a difference Every, yes but yeah when you nail it you are you could just free float in in perpetuity yeah, in a position do -do -do. you're not going yeah. up you're not going down you've got it and, and the key in. is that you can breathe so for the non-divers yeah you have this you have air in your scuba tank that's highly compressed it's compacted down to be super high density and very low buoyancy for how much air is in there because it's just super compressed mm -hmm. and every time you take a breath your regulator brings that air into your lungs and it expands into lung volume Right, and, and then you're, when your lungs fill up, it's like you have a balloon, and now you start to float. And then when you exhale, all those bubbles go out, and your lungs get small, and you start to sink. And so when you're swimming along as an open circuit scuba diver, as you inhale, your body naturally goes up, and as you exhale, you naturally go down, and you get used to it. So that if you're swimming along and there's an obstacle that you want to go over, you'll be swimming along, you're neutrally buoyant, and you take it just, oh, here's an obstacle. You inhale gently, and you go up, and then when you go over it, you exhale, and you go back down, and you keep on going. And you, you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. I mean, we've, well, been, diving, we we've yeah. been diving for 30-something years. You've been diving 35 years? 39. 39 years. He's old. In any case, so you're so used to this, and the analogy that I like to give people is like, imagine you, you're, you're learning to drive a car with a manual transmission, right? When you first start to drive, you gotta get the hang of the clutch and the gas and the shift and the whole thing, and you have to focus your attention on driving because you really have to think about doing those shifts. And after a while, you get so used to it, it's like muscle memory. You, yeah, just, you right. just shift, you don't even sure. think. You could be having a conversation, you could be you know, talking on the phone, yeah. well, maybe not talking on the phone, but you could be doing a lot of multitasking while you're driving, not even thinking about shifting. Now imagine now that somebody flipped the, the gas pedal and the clutch. That's all they did. They just flipped the gas pedal in the clutch. You'd have a hard time. You would crash into a tree instantly. You would never be able to, sh it would take so long to learn. Oh. But if I took someone that had never driven before and put them in the car that had the clutch and, and the gas backwards, they could learn it probably just as fast as you learned it the other way, right? Sure. So if you take someone that's been diving open circuit scuba for 30 years, and then you slap them in a rebreather and it does nothing the way they expect. When I'm swimming along and I inhale, it just takes some air from the counter lung and moves it into my lung. The volume doesn't change, it just moves around in a circle. Yeah. And so when I swim up to something and I inhale, literally nothing happens. <laughs> But now we know the solution. Take Ed Sorensen's class? Ed Sorensen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the solution. That is the solution. Yes. Yeah. So it was rigorous. So it was five it days. Was it was five days. 
And every day he would add some new things. In five long days. Very long These days. were, I mean, Especially I the day, day where you was... flooded your loop and we had to wait for you to go back and yeah. repack your scrubbers. I, I mean, the first couple days were like 13, 13 hour days. Yeah. There, it was exhausting. It was exhausting. It was exhausting, but it was fun. It was fun. So and we did, did some and long he dives. he had these like underwater flashcards. Yes, oh, the flashcards. But now like you know nightmare cards. And 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 he had a circuit in the cave that you had to swim, and it was a torture circuit because it was forty feet deep on one end, yeah. and it was like. 30 feet deep on the other end and it went up and then it went down and then it went up and then it went down but it's a cave so it's it's a passageway yeah. so all along the way if you float up you hit the ceiling and of course that's bad and if you float down you hit the floor in and you're not allowed to hit the ceiling or the floor in a sense like the cave training in the cave was an advantage because in open water if you were being trained on this rebreather you could kind of cheat right like you can you know if right. it's open water, like 30, who's gonna, 20, whatever. Who's going to know if you win yeah, up Yeah, how are they going to force you up this way or that way? It'd be a little tough. But here, like, you have no option. Like, there's no way to cheat it. You're going up. You're going down. Yeah. And then you go down into the chimney to his second torture chamber room. <laughs> then you come back from that torture chamber room. Then there was Medi's. Terrified. Medi's. Then there was Medi's maze. Medi's maze, which yes. was the worst torture of torture all. Torture room. Tor torture chamber number three. Because that one had a huge, huge, difference. huge change. Of depth, but you went down to you went down to like fifty, and then you came up to like twenty, yes. and then you went around a big loop, and you very slowly went back down to fifty, and then you came up to twenty. We, then he reversed it, and you had to do the quick change. And if you went down the deep, down the, from twenty down to fifty, and you touched bottom, you got the stare. Yeah. You got the stare. Yes, it, I, was, it would be. A I saw that. You on the review. suck. <laughs> <laughs> We've been found out. <laughs> Oh, so horrible. And I think I'm such a good diver. And then, I take, and then I take Ed's class and I find out that uh, not so much. There's levels. Yeah. He's, in, he's, yeah. he's next level. Yeah. So then what would happen, he had these cards. Yes. And you'd be swimming this lap of torture, trying to keep your buoyancy going up, over here, going down, over here. And you're <laughs> trying to move all the controls and try not to look like an idiot. Try to keep your fins up, try to keep your posture right, try to keep your hands out, try to monitor your PO2, and you're doing all the right things, and then you swim by Ed, and you just go, oh, please let him not, please, please don't let him. And he'd, he'd whip out a flash card, and he'd go, you're low on PO2, and you'd be like, ah, 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 what do we do? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to the past, to the past, and you keep swimming, <laughs> and then Todd and then would come around. Right. Next. Then Todd right. would come around, and Todd would go, oh, I see what he did. He flashed the, the low on PO2, card i'm ready but then when you got to him i would become something completely it'd be like hypoxia or right. something else completely different <laughs> you have to bail yeah, out but every once in a while he would give you the fist bump that should right. be like every once in a did, while did okay. every once in a while that you would do, okay. you would you would do well and you'd get the fist bump yes. and when you got the fist bump you were so happy yeah. like oh yeah i got the but, fist bump the, 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 he, i mean now i see his formula was like you start out outside the cave, just at this top. He that runs, was torture too. He runs through the cards, then he checks your trim and buoyancy in a little section. And then after that, you go start entering the cave. You do your, you know, 20 foot checks for, uh, for uh, cell verification uh, and, and uh, 1.6 check for oxygen and to check your cells. Then you enter the cave and then you get to torture chamber number one. You, you sw he said, you swim for like 20 minutes and then the cards start. Bang, 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 bang. For what seems like forever. Yeah. And then you're into the deep section and it's cards. Bang, 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 bang. Harder drills. Just buoyancy up and down, SCR drills, all the tough stuff. <laughs> deep. And then you're out of that. And then don't forget, we had to, we had to bail out open circuit bail from out deep open to circuit, shallow. Deep to shallow, that's right. And, and manage the expanding buoyancy of everything yes. while you're on open circuit. Yep. You're doing the chicken. That's burping right. the bladder and all that yeah. stuff. It was, uh, it was really interesting. It was challenging. Yeah. It was definitely challenging. But how do you feel as a diver right now? By the way, did you pass? I did pass. I think we both passed. We, we, pa passed. we, passed. we passed. But I got to tell you, it was not a foregone conclusion. In the, last, in the last day, we were feeling the pressure because before the dive, he said, 
you know, you guys have been doing pretty well, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna wait and see how you do on the checkout, the final checkout. Yeah. And we're both like, if we screw up anything, Ed's gonna fail us. And then we're yeah. gonna have the Ed Sorensen failure of shame. <laughs> that's it. That's it. What would be the way? I mean, we're discussing what would be the correction process? Is it a, coming back for a week? Right. Get an extra day? Yeah. How's it all work? Now, fortunately, we had left two extra days in our trip just in case. We did. But well, you know, I, it, there, there were degrees. I think what it comes down to is he needed confidence that you could safely run the unit. Everything else, you know, there's, you, you come out of the class knowing you need to work on some skills. Oh, yeah. You come out of the and, class. And I think that's going to be true. You come out of the class everybody. literally terrible at diving it. Yes. But you can dive it. But you're, you're, you can, you can, you're safe at diving. You're safe you, at diving. You can, you can run it. You're yes. safe. Yes. You, but you're terrible at it. Yes. Yeah. It's like you went to driver's ed and you know, you know how to you drive pass, a car. You, you and pass. then you, you, went, you went your driver's test and you passed. But everybody knows you still really suck at driving a car. It's the old adage. It's the, it, you know, this, you get the card and it's the license to learn. It's right? the license to learn. You get, you get your driver's license and it's now you start driving and you really start learning. And it's the same thing here. Now we're ready to like really learn how to use the units. And you know what the worst part is? What's the worst part? Well, it's December. <laughs> it's December. We just got our new rebreathers and we're going to go home where it's winter. Yes. How, how are we going to practice? Okay. I'm Ooh. feeling like a dive trip is coming on. I like, someplace warm. I like the way that sounds. Ah, yeah. someplace warm that's rebreather friendly. Something with caves maybe? No, we can't dive it in caves yet. Can't dive it in caves. Can't oh, dive true. it in caves yet. Yeah. You got to do open water for a while before we can do the cave thing. I guess it's tropical water then. I'm thinking someplace warm. So if you are the owner of a tropical hotel and dive shop, call us. That's it. We're looking for some segment ideas that can support rebreathers. That's right. Yeah, that's cool. But anything else we want to do to talk about this in our amazing vlog? I, you know, you know, I think it's been a great week. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's all for now. It's yeah. been great. Yeah. So um, we were terrified by Ed. Yes. But we love him and we thought the we class did. was amazing and we think we learned so much and we're glad that we had an instructor that brought the best of our skills out. And, and let's be clear about Ed. One of, he's an amazing person and one of the most amazing skills he has is as angry as he seems. He's actually not. He's not. He's he just doesn't loud. hold a grudge. He's just loud. He's like, he's, he's, you know, when you get to the surface, he's kind of laughing at it. He's done it so long. Uh, and brought so many people up from nothing to be exceptional divers that like while you feel like you, you, you know you let the professor down like he's he's very very uh, friendly and humble and, and just a wonderful human being well and, and every returning guest gets a big hug yes like you know he's just a very warm guy he, he comes off like a tough guy but he's actually he's a teddy bear he's a teddy bear yeah, yeah. he is but he will give you the Ed Sorensen head shake of shame well, underwater if you suck. He will keep you alive, right? <laughs> He'll make sure you know the unit so that you can stay alive, no matter what happened to the other head shake. This. Oh, God. <laughs> what are you doing? All right. Well, everybody, that's our vlog. Stay tuned for the episode or... Maybe the episode already came out. I don't know. How do we do vlogs? No, We're gonna find out. you probably already saw the episode. But if you did or you didn't, I hope you liked the vlog. And uh, subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. We'll talk again. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end. You're crazy if you don't subscribe. Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode. And check out our merch link in the description for some Blue World swag. Thank you.